We're now in the fifth video of this tutorial series animating the skeleton model exported from MakeHuman. And I left off in the last video uh, finishing up on the hands. And I said that I would add a series of bones to the fingers and demonstrated how I would do that. Let's have a look from the side view. And I'll rotate that a bit and so here's the eight bones and there's eight bones per per hand that I've added and remembering to add these bones and add them from the front view is important otherwise all these bones will go wonky and they'll be sitting at different angles because they'll go to up and down so if we're not in a front view they'll be added on an angle and not work out so great so that's one thing to remember and I still haven't named these bones so I'm going to first off size them all so I'll use box select select the fingertip ones Do the same thing on the other hand, box select, select those, and come in a little bit closer so we can see better. Now I'm going to grab them all, limit to the Y axis so they'll only go up and down. And pull them down until they're quite small, like on the thumb bone. Having them nice and small makes them a little less obtrusive. And then we'll do the same thing for the controller bones, but we won't shrink those as small. So we want those sticking up so we can easily grab and control the fingers. So I'll box select both sides grab them, limit Y axes by pressing the Y key and shrink those down a little bit. Let's have a look at that from a side view. Make sure everything's all nice and straight. those look good. We'll look at the other side to make sure they look straight too. And that is the entire reason for the process of rebuilding these fingers is um, Make Human gave them some lovely shapes that I'm sure followed the contours of proper bones but those shapes were not in the straight lines that I felt I would be able to um, use to make these controls and my experiment showed that the shapes that they had had my fingers curl in odd directions so that's the reason for that process of rebuilding this hand now like with the thumb all of these bones need to be named and parented and Again, I'm just going to demonstrate on one. Hopefully I can grab it. So this would be <coughs> the index right bone. So I'll name that index right and parent that to the right wrist. And then do the fingertip bone which would be index IK right and make that the child of the index right bone where's that here it is index right and again it'll take on the same appearance it'll have this line going from the bone 
that it's parented to. So this bone's parented to this bone, this bone's parented to the wrist, the same as on the thumb. It's all very much the same thing here over and over again now. So with that done, I can go into pose mode and add an IK constraint by using shift I. IK constraint to active bone and set a chain length of three. And I'm going to repeat this process for the entire hand and come back with that done. I'll have them all parented, named, and with the constraint set. And we'll have a look at where we are then. So I'll be back in just a second with all that done. Well, we've still got a few minutes left here. I've finished naming, parenting, and adding the constraints to all of the finger bones. So no, they're all functional. And I haven't had added any constraints to the bones, but that might also be an idea. Um, in terms of the rotation, they might want one might want to constrain it to certain degrees to make it easier to rotate. Um, and stay within realistic bounds. Personally, I don't think that I'm going to bother with that. I figure from here it should be good enough and I might change my mind on that and add some constraints. And I would add them in along here, perhaps limit X, Y, or Z to help the finger not move in unusual ways. As it is though, from here, I can easily rotate and close that finger in. The motion is honestly a little bit limited and my use of the of that particular constraint is probably not the best way to go about it. I'm sure that there's um, more knowledgeable ways to go about it. But I'm very, very uh, new to this software, and there's an awful lot to learn to it. So I just kind of learn it at one level, and then let that advance as I go. So this is a level that I can add the constraint at, and get these fingers to cooperate with, with a little bit of ease of animation. And I think that even though a little bit limited, they'll work pretty good for me and be a lot easier than trying to animate the individual bones. I think that very quickly I'll go into edit mode and look at adding a quick chin bone to this fellow and we'll move on. We'll progress now off of the hands for a while. So I'm going to snap the cursor to the selection and what I've done is simply selected any joint that's along the middle axis. I'll go back into a side view. Select the pivot in between the neck and the head. Zoom in a bit. And line myself up in the area of the chin. Use control mouse key. And the reason why I centered my cursor is because I can determine the location of this pivot along only two planes with my uh, pointer alone. And by setting the cursor to the center, I've also made the bone center and determined the third plane. And that's the reason for that. So we get a nice accurate um, addition of this chin. I'm out of time now. We're going to look at adding some eye bones later. Which will be funny. Actually they'll stick out that way. And then some hip bones as well. And that will be in later videos. And until then, happy modeling.